Hi oh, everyone, welcome back to Rich Reviews and today we have this stunning 1989 Ferrari 328 GTS kindly provided to us by JD Classics in Chelmsford. Roll the intro. Doon, 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 doon. Doo, 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 doo. Okay, okay, I know. Magnum was actually associated with the Ferrari 308, not the Ferrari 328. And that gives me a nice little segue because the first Ferrari V8 mid-engine car was the Ferrari 308. Now the precursor to the 308 was actually a Dino. The Dino 308 was produced in 1973 and it was rebranded to the Ferrari 308 in 1976. So the first V8 Ferrari mid-engine Ferrari was the Ferrari 308. This 328 is 266 brake horsepower and 224 pound-foot of torque. It's a 3.2 litre, therefore 328 stands for 3.2 litre and the 8 stands for V8. As in 308 stands for 3 litre and V8. This particular car has been partly restored by Foskers. The restoration included taking the paintwork or repainting the car totally back to Nero black paint. The external bodywork had been recolored to Rosso Corsa and to red Rosso Corsa, would you believe it? So it's now been taken back to its OEM standard coloring of black Nero. In addition, the interior has been restored back to its biscuit tan coloring. And this is just stunning. The interior on this car is beautiful. In fact, the whole specification is stunning. Black Nero over biscuit tan interior. The 328 also has less less pleasing if you like switch gear the switch gear in the 308 is chrome whereas the switch gear on the 328 is more plastified if that's a word in itself with regards to internal luggage compartment space you've got this small compartment here which you can lock so you could put your wallet or something like that in there although i suspect the lock is quite easily easy to break into so i wouldn't recommend putting any valuables in there but you could if you so chose to with regards to storage area behind the seats, you've got a bit of storage area behind the seats. If I was to let this seat come forward a bit, you can see you've got some bits and pieces. I would say some soft jackets, etc., or soft bags that you could squeeze behind here if you didn't, if you weren't able to fit them into the rear luggage compartment space. Now, back in the day, back in my day, I should say, handbrakes used to be in the center part near the center console of the car. And you used to hold, pull them up and they used to stay up. And then when you wanted to let them down, you had to pull them up a little bit, push the button in and let them down. Now this handbrake system actually is on the right hand side. So you think, God, that's gonna be a pain in the backside because that's gonna obstruct you when you wanna get it in and out of the car if the handbrake's on. But no, you actually put the handbrake on or in this case, let it off. It's in gear, so we're all right guys by pulling it up, pushing the button in, and then letting it down. The handbrake is now off and the light rewards you by telling you when the handbrake's on and off. So you have a red warning light when the handbrake is on. And then when you want to put the handbrake on, you pull it up and then you can automatically just drop it down so it doesn't get in the way when you're walking in and out of the sill, when you're, covering, when you're walking over the sill section of the car to get inside the car. Pretty cool, eh? So it doesn't obstruct you. And it makes it easier because it's on the right hand side of the car. It's not squeezed in beside the center console and provides easier access for you to pull up and down without obstructing your access into the car. Now, when you look at the pullers that open up the front lid, you've got these lovely chrome pullers, stunningly beautiful. And you've got the same for the puller that opens up the rear luggage compartment and obviously provides you access to the engine, to that beautiful 3.2 litre transverse engine. If you do open up the front section, just to show you, so this opens forwards, and of course, because this has been partly restored, mostly fully restored, to be honest, um, the gas struts are all renewed, so you're not gonna have the lids coming down on you as you would have noticed with the rear engine cover. As you can see, there isn't any luggage space in here. You've got this um, brake fluid area, and it gives you a date on there when the brake fluid was last, was last renewed. You've got a spare wheel and you've got a front radiators with cooling, with cooling fans. And of course, taking pride of place right there in the center is that manual clickety-clack gear shift. That is awesome. It just makes the car. 
we'll get on more to how that sounds when we move into the driving section of this video but that is just an incredible artifact of these classic cars and it is a classic car now this car is 33 years old guys 33 years old now obviously it's been partly restored so it looks as new probably better than new to be honest i'll provide a link to this car in the description below make sure you click that link to provide further details and of course it's been provided by jd classic so it'll take you to the jd classics advert for this particular car so moving to the showcase of the ferrari 328 you have this beautiful 3.2 liter v8 now, as I detailed earlier, this is 266 brake horsepower, 224 pound of foot of torque, and we'll take you from 0 to 62 in 6.4 seconds, and we'll scream you up to 163 miles per hour. Now, the red line on this car is around 7,750, so just under 8,000 8, RPM. So it's, it's quite high considering it's year. Remember, it's 33 years old, guys. This car is 33 years old. I think the actual engine was fully restored. So this is a rebuilt engine. And when you listen to it on tick over, you can tell it's been rebuilt there's no clacking there's no tap it rattle when you start the car up from cold it's just smooth from the get-go yeah because it's an old style car it's not carburetted obviously it's injection but it's manual injection with this is the manual injector injection system so it's it's not quite got the electronics of modern day ferraris as you can imagine so it's a bit lumpy when it starts up cold until it's warmed up but it hasn't got that that rattling tap it sound that you get with cars that are a bit worn so this is a beautiful version of this 3.2 liter engine because it's transversely mounted you gain access to the clutch i.e the gearbox but to replace the clutch and the cam belts from this side so you think okay well surely it's an engine out job no it isn't you can gain access by jacking it up on this side of the car by jacking up the offside wheel, removing the offside wheel, you may have to also remove the offside disc, and then you can gain access with, with removing the, the internal panel, of course. You can gain access then to the side of the engine to replace the clutch and to replace the cam belt, the timing cam belt. So it's not a full engine out job on the 328. So for storage, this is pretty much it, guys. <laughs> it's just behind the engine so if you if you're gonna want to carry some ice cream then carry it behind your seats don't carry it here because you've got the engine just behind this bulkhead and therefore it's going to get quite warm you seal out this compartment section with this zipped cover it's like a tonneau cover zip tonneau cover for your luggage compartment and considering it's a free to weight and considering it's quite a small car by the way the curb weight of this car is 1358 kilos so it wasn't a light car if you think about my 458 spider is 1500 around 1560 kilos or 1600 kilos this this isn't light so it's a robust solidly built car remember the early early cars the early early 308s were actually fiberglass external bodies this obviously is is steel and this is the compartment section you get. So you can still get some, a fair amount of luggage in there if you wanted to um, go touring um, around Europe, say, for example. Now, moving to the front nose of the car. Pop-up headlights, guys. We all know we love a pop-up headlight. And these are the best pop-up headlights you can get in the game. Just look at this. Super cool. Look at that. I know I'd be easily pleased, but that is a real throwback to my childhood pop-up headlights on a supercar awesome so let's take it out on the road and see how this 33 year old 1989 ferrari 328 performs Before we check out on the road just a little bit about storage you have got some additional storage here you've got a net here by the side of the center console but only on the passenger side and each door card has this section that you can pull out on the side but it's only a small additional amount of storage the main storage area is in the rear boot section near the engine and behind the seats and a little bit about the target roof section i'm six foot one and most of my height is in my legs and we'll talk a little bit about the driving angle in a minute but as you can see my head is pretty much going to be hit 
hitting that targa roof so we left the targa panel back at the dealership back at jd classics um, but if you did find yourself where you had the roof on and you wanted to remove it while you're out driving you would normally store it behind the seats but it unlike the 355 there isn't any locating point behind the seat so you'd have to just leave it freestanding there and of course it can bang around and you don't really want that so you're more likely to leave the target roof at home and take it out on a nice sunny day where it's unlikely to rain okay then let's take the three to eight out on the road if you enjoyed the video so far guys please make sure you give it a like and if you're not subscribed please think about subscribing now back to the video straight away into the manual gearbox pretty damn cool it's got a very good synchro mesh on the first gear as well which is impressive and nice to see which means you can slot it into first when the car's still moving you don't get it crunching and this is a five-speed manual gearbox as I detailed earlier with a dog leg reverse so in a normal first position on most cars that's where your reverse is on this car and to be able to engage first you have to push it down anyway so you're not going to accidentally put it into reverse of course if you're heavy if you're heavy-handed with a gear lever then you might accidentally put it into reverse so it's always wise to remember that dog leg so first impression driving the three to eight it's a non-assisted steering so it's quite heavy to out from the outset until you actually get rolling then it loosens up a bit and becomes a bit more sweet it's still a fairly heavy steering though you hear the clickety clack of that gear lever as it goes in it does feel weird to begin with um, when you try to move it to third gear because your brain thinks you must put it up but of course you pull it down and this red line is just under 8,000 and that was just up to 6,000 there so we're nowhere near the red line so it revs very sprightly for an old 33 year old 3.2 litre engine one thing about Ferrari they certainly knew how to build engines now this car is running on 16 inch rims which means that the tyres are the old design so they have quite a bit of sidewall cushioning so when you move this car around into corners you lean on the tyres a fair bit means you have to wait until the, the tyres load, load up and then you get the, the real true performance of the chassis of the car. So you can feel like the car's sliding but actually you're leaning into the sidewall of the tyres because the tyres, the tyre sidewalls are so, so wide or so deep whichever way you want to call it. Brakes are quite good as well, you've got discs all around, ventilated discs on the front. Turning circle to be honest is not great. <laughs> just how it is clutch is quite low to the floor as well and there you've got the heavy steering <laughs> turning around so it's it is quite heavy from that respect second gear is where third gear would normally be and third is where fourth would normally be etc in a normal gearbox placing of the car is dead easy you've got the front wing haunches so you can see those in your peripheral vision all the time and it's a short wheelbase car so it's very easy to place on the road and because it's quite small it really fits around you more on that later um, therefore it's it's a, it's a very easy car to place on the road it's not like the modern day Ferraris which are quite wide and quite big and can be quite of a, a pain to place sometimes depending on the type of car that you're driving especially if you're driving something like a, a front engined v12 like the f12 or the a12 for example these sort of roads that we're on now these are pretty much what this car was designed for great little country roads really let the engine pull Yes, this doesn't sound like a modern day Ferrari, it doesn't scream like a 355, it doesn't howl up to 9000 like, like the 458 for example, but it's 33 years old. Again, you can feel that steering is quite heavy. It does communicate fairly well, it's obviously a, a hydraulic system, but Ferrari were very hit or miss with their steering. I wouldn't say it's anywhere near the best steering that Ferrari has ever produced. 
I've yet to drive a 348, but I suspect the 348 would far surpass the steering. The, the, the engine is quite sprightly though, it revs quite cleanly. So this is this is 266 brake horsepower and 224 pound foot of torque. So it's a fairly torquey engine. As long as you keep it fairly high in the rev range, as long as you keep it up around the, the five, six thousand range, or, or definitely above four thousand, then you're okay, it'll pull. And it'll pull from it'll pull from sort of three, three thousand RPM, but it'll pull slowly. You really need it in around the four thousand, the four thousand, five thousand mark. hauling it around corners like this you've got to really drag the steering around especially if you're changing gear at the same time and you've got to make sure you're allowing for it leaning into the tires as you come around the corners those those side walls will compress a bit they'll make the car seem like it's losing traction um, especially if you're a bit if you're driving a bit sprightly Is a, is a really nice place to be but I must say at six foot one with very long legs it's not ideal for me necessarily you, I would say you need to have a, be a bit shorter in your legs to be comfortable to be fully comfortable in the three to eight my legs are I've got enough length in there with regards to the driving position but the angle that the pedals are at with regards to the seating position requires you to be at a twisted angle and it does cause a, a little bit of grief with your hips especially if you're getting on a bit like I am and your hips are a bit cranky quite an easy car to get used to as well we've driven a few miles in this today and it's, it's, a, it's a joy it's a classic joy really to it's a classic joy to work around these corners yeah the car's a bit clunky yeah you have to push it sometimes to get it into gear because you know the gearbox is 33 years old even though it's been restored and the, and the steering's heavy but once you get used to that you've certainly got this classic feel about this car the classic driving feel and the brakes although nowhere near modern time capability they're very good for its year still got discs all around and they certainly haul you back from the pace that the car delivers again remembering guys this is only 266 brake horsepower and this car weighs around 1350 kilograms so the performance to weight ratio isn't fantastic but it is 33 years old and it is a 328 it may not be the magnum 308 but it's the downstream derivative and many would say the 328 is the better car of the two all depends what you want, horses for courses, but the 328 is an updated version of the 308 and by far more reliable than the 308. Visibility is good. You've got the side A pillars, so I've got the target roof off at the moment, so I can't vouch for what the visibility would be like with the target roof on, but I would think it's comparable because <coughs> the target panel doesn't obstruct any of your side vision. Obviously, you haven't got a, a viewing panel through the top of the roof, so you're not going to gain anything from having the target roof on. But the visibility is certainly good um, with regards to the, the frontal area and the side A pillars. With regards to the rear section, looking to your left, you're obstructed by the rear side buttresses, so the visibility isn't the best. But when pulling out from junctions like this, no problem whatsoever, no issues with visibility. If you want that classic Ferrari driving experience, you're not going to do much better than a Ferrari 328. Honestly, this delivers it in spades.
lovely little country roads like this, you get to really work the gearbox, and the gearbox is a delight. The great thing about the Ferrari 328 3.2 liter engine is that it's easy accessible and it can be worked on by home mechanics. So if you feel you're, you're a bit of a, if you feel you're quite handy with a set of spanners, then you can work on it on yourself. It's not all electronics. Many people work on these types of cars in their own garages. And as I detailed earlier, <coughs> you can gain access to change the clutch and to change the timing belt from the offside rear wheel. So you remove the offside rear wheel and that cabin will provide all the access point for you. So I guess I better close out the video bring my thoughts to a conclusion if you're looking for that classic Ferrari driving experience you won't go far wrong with this Ferrari 328 it provides that in spades yes the steering is a bit heavy yes you've got a long travel on the clutch pedal but that's how these cars were back in the day if you're looking for that old style Ferrari classic driving experience with that manual gated gearbox lever it doesn't get much better guys. You've got the stunning looks, the short wheelbase, the, a car that folds around you. Yes, you haven't got a fantastic amount of room inside, but it's a 33 year old classic Ferrari, but it's a 328. So if you want a 308, but you want a more reliable 308, the 3 to 8 is the car for you. A bit more performance as well, a bit more torque, and a bit more reliability. And I, in my opinion, to be honest, guys, I would say better looks too. I'd say that the 3 to 8 looks better than the 308. But that's obviously individual opinion. This car was one of my heroes. This, this was one of the cars that I always looked at in car magazines when I was younger. And yes, I watched Magnum in spades when I was a youngster thinking how cool it would be to own a 308. It hasn't disappointed. Yes, it's a heavy set car. It's not as fluid and as easy to drive as my 458 say for example, but it really rewards you when you get it right. Awesome car great classic car and definitely a thumbs up from me if you enjoyed the video please make sure you give it a like always very important for the channel if you're not subscribed guys please think about subscribing thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next video